In this issue, we will tell you the exciting story about the ancestors of one of the most unique predators of all time, Spinosaurus. Let's walk through his ancient family tree to understand how this giant became the amazing creature we know. Let's start from the very beginning. Spinosaurus, like many other dinosaurs, traces its lineage to a group of reptiles known as Archosaurus. These ancient animals appeared on Earth about 250 million years ago. Archosaurus gave rise not only to dinosaurs, but also to birds and crocodiles. This was a kind of starting block from which the great race of evolution began. Let's move on. A group known as the Theropods appears on the scene. These are bipedal predators, from which such famous dinosaurs as Tyrannosaurus and Allosaurus descended. It was among theropods that the foundation for the future Spinosaurus was laid. In theropods one could already notice the traits that later developed in our hero. Bipedal gait, sharp teeth, and powerful jaws. Now we move on to a narrower group from which Spinosaurus was born Megalosauroids. This is a family of theropods that were quite large predators of their time. Megalosaurs were more traditional predator dinosaurs, living on land and hunting other dinosaurs. But evolution did not stand still, and one of the branches of Megalosauroids took an unusual path. This is how Spinosauroids appear on the scene, and this is where the fun begins. One of the first representatives of this group was Baryonyx, a predator that had already begun to adapt to an aquatic lifestyle. Baryonyx had long, narrow jaws and claws adapted for catching fish. Baryonyx translates as heavy claw, and believe me, this is not just a pretty name, but a real hint of his formidable weapon. Baryonyx was a fairly large dinosaur. Its body length reached about 30 feet, and it was estimated to weigh about one and a half tons. Its appearance was quite unusual for a predator. At first glance, it looked like a typical theropod, bipedal, with a long tail, sharp teeth, and powerful front legs. But what made Baryonyx stand out from others were its huge claws on its front paws and its elongated snout, which was more reminiscent of a crocodile. The main feature of Baryonyx was its huge claw on the first toe of the forelimbs, which could reach a length of up to one foot. Imagine how he used this claw for hunting. This was his main weapon, with which he could grab prey tear flesh and even snatch fish out of the water. Yes, yes, Baryonyx was not only a hunter on land, but also an excellent fisherman. Baryonyx was a predator that fed primarily on fish, but could also hunt other dinosaurs and animals. One of Baryonyx's hunting methods was probably to wait for prey near bodies of water. Thanks to its long forelimbs, sharp teeth, and a good sense of smell, it could, with a well-aimed jump, capture fish or other animals that came to drink water. It is also suggested that Baryonyx could use its long head and sharp teeth to ambush prey, attacking it at close range. This is a tactic that many predatory dinosaurs may have used to successfully hunt. This was the first step towards becoming a full aquatic hunter like its descendant Spinosaurus. But Baryonyx was just the beginning. Before you as Succominus Succominus was an impressive predator. Its body length reached about 36 feet, and it weighed approximately 3 to 5 tons. This dinosaur was distinguished by a long, narrow snout that resembled that of a crocodile. Its teeth were numerous and sharp, making it an ideal hunter of fish and other small animals. 
Like other Spinosaurids, its teeth were not adapted for tearing meat, but rather for grasping and holding slippery prey. One of the features of Succamelmus was its long forelimbs equipped with powerful claws. Although the claws of Succamelmus were not as huge as those of Baryonyx, they were still quite impressive and were probably used for grasping and holding prey, as well as for digging for food. Ostafricosaurus is one of the Spinosaurids and lived about 150 million years ago, during the late Jurassic period. Ostafricosaurus was discovered in what is now Tanzania, East Africa, and is one of the most ancient and mysterious members of its group. Ostafricosaurus fossils found include mostly tooth fragments, making it one of the most difficult dinosaurs to study. Despite the paucity of material, Ostafricosaurus still turned out to be an important link in understanding the evolution of Spinosaurids, since it belongs to the earliest representatives of this group. Because Ostafricosaurus was an early member of its group, it was likely smaller and less specialized than its later relatives such as Spinosaurus and Baryonyx. It can be assumed that its body length was about 23 feet, which makes it a fairly large predator for its time. Ostafricosaurus, like other Spinosaurids, was probably a semi-aquatic predator. His teeth, a dap designed for catching and holding slippery prey, indicate that it could hunt fish and other aquatic or semi-aquatic animals. Ostafricosaurus may have lived near rivers and lakes, where it could have used its adaptations to hunt aquatic prey. Another ancestor of Spinosaurus. The history of the discovery of the Irritator is full of oddities. His remains were discovered in the Santana Formation, known for its well-preserved fossils. But here's what's interesting. When paleontologists began to study the found skull, they discovered that someone had already worked on this skull before them. Unknown researchers have attempted to restore the skull by adding plaster to it and even changing its shape to make it more attractive for sale. This, of course, caused great irritation among scientists, so the dinosaur was called an irritator. From the English word irritate, which means to irritate, Irritator was a relatively large dinosaur, reaching a length of about 26 feet and weighing approximately one ton. It had a long, narrow snout that resembled that of a crocodile, one of the key features characteristic of Spinosaurids. This snout was equipped with numerous teeth, ideal for capturing slippery prey such as fish. In addition, the Irritator's skull was reinforced with bone ridges, which gave it an even more menacing appearance. Although it is not known for sure whether Irritator had a dorsal sail like its later relative Spinosaurus, its anatomy still indicates that it was a semi-aquatic predator that spent a lot of time in the water. Crustachosaurus this mysterious predator lived about 112 million years ago, in the early Cretaceous period, in the territory of modern Africa, including the territory of Niger. Like other Spinosaurids, Cristatosaurus had characteristic features that made it unique among other dinosaurs. It had a long, narrow snout, similar to a crocodile, which is a common feature among this group of predators. Its body length was estimated to be approximately 22 feet, making it a relatively large predator of its time, although smaller compared to later, larger Spinosaurids such as Spinosaurus. The skull of the Crustatosaurus was equipped with sharp teeth, which were ideal for capturing and holding fish, its main prey. Although we do not have a complete picture of this dinosaur's appearance, it is believed that it may have had a small dorsal sail or crest on its back, as reflected in its name. Crustatus means crest in Latin. This crest could play a role in thermoregulation or serve for display among relatives. Crustatosaurus is an important link in the evolution of Spinosaurids, as it represents an early stage in the development of this group. 
It helps us understand how these dinosaurs adapted to a semi-aquatic environment and how they gradually became some of the most unique and specialized predators in dinosaur history. Studying Cristatosaurus also helps fill gaps in our understanding of the evolution of Spinosaurids in Africa, where they reached their peak. And this is Iberospin. Iberospinus is an extremely primitive member of the family that lived in the early Cretaceous period 125 million years ago. However, it already shows adaptations to a semi-aquatic lifestyle, which was later adopted by Spinosaurines and Baryonychines. This Spinosaurin is also worth noting. Wallabinovenatrix. Wallabinovenatrix was a medium-sized Spinosaurid, estimated to be about a foot long and weighing up to two tons. Like other Spinosaurids, it had a long, narrow snout that resembled that of a crocodile and was equipped with numerous sharp teeth ideal for capturing and holding fish. One of the features of Wallabinovenatrix was the structure of its spine, which indicated the presence of a high dorsal crest or sail. This crest was probably used for thermoregulation or for display among conspecifics. Such adaptations could also play a role in the lives of these predators, helping them attract attention during mating rituals or scare away competitors. Like other Spinosaurids, Wallabinovenatrix probably led a semi-aquatic lifestyle. She lived near rivers, lakes, and swamps, where she hunted large fish and other aquatic animals. Its long jaws and sharp teeth were ideal for catching slippery prey, and its semi-aquatic lifestyle made it a formidable predator in this environment. In addition to fish, Wallabonatrix may have preyed on other small animals, including amphibians, reptiles, and perhaps even young dinosaurs. This versatility made it a successful predator, capable of obtaining food both in water and on land. Camarillosaurus This ancient Spinosaurid was likely a descendant of Wallabonavenatrix or descended from a common ancestor, making it a possible first Spinosaurin. Although its position is somewhat controversial due to the fragmentary nature of the remains, we can say for sure that this is a Spinosaurid. True, it was initially classified as a primitive ceratosaur. Camarillosaurus is the smallest Spinosaurid found to date. Oxalea. One of the largest and most impressive representatives of Spinosaurids, which lived in the territory of modern Brazil approximately 100 to 95 million years ago, in the mid-Cretaceous period. This dinosaur deserves special attention not only because of its impressive size, but also because it is one of the largest predators that ever existed in South America. Oxalea is named after the Afro-Brazilian deity Oxala, reflecting the cultural significance of the region where her remains were found. Despite the limited fossil evidence, scientists have been able to draw some important conclusions about its size and place in the evolution of Spinosaurids. Her story reminds us that even fragmentary finds can provide enormous amounts of information about life on Earth millions of years ago. Oxalea is another prime example of how nature has experimented with shapes and adaptations to create amazing creatures that continue to amaze and inspire us to this day. Finally, at the top of this evolutionary ladder stands the Spinosaurus itself. It combines all the features of its ancestors and adds its own unique features. A huge sail on its back that made it look like a cross between a dinosaur and a sailboat, and a completely aquatic lifestyle. Spinosaurus was a gigantic dinosaur that could reach 50 feet in length and was estimated to weigh 7 to 9 tons. 
But what really sets Spinosaurus apart is its unique dorsal sail, made up of long bony projections connected by skin. This sail could reach a height of up to 7 feet and gave Spinosaurus a truly impressive appearance. Spinosaurus was likely a strong swimmer, and its long, powerful body, reminiscent of modern crocodiles, allowed it to move efficiently in the water. Its semi-aquatic lifestyle also made it unique among theropods, the group to which Spinosaurus belonged. He probably spent most of his time in the water, hunting fish and other aquatic animals. Have you watched the video? Give it a thumbs up and leave a comment. If you haven't subscribed, be sure to do so. Don't forget to click on the bell so you don't miss new and interesting videos from the Real Unreal channel.